Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, a volcano, and top news. You might recall that yesterday we saw evidence of a CME released just out of view behind the limb. Today we can review SOHO coronagraphs and tell it was a small CME released more than 90 degrees away from our planet. Let's come to spaceweathernews.com and check out the last 24 hours and 193 angstroms. Absolutely no sunspots and no solar flares. Dark, small, coronal opening turning through as we come next to peek in on the solar wind. We've discussed it since a three-day forecast of solar wind about a week ago. Ramp up of plasma speed to 600 kilometers per second on the 18th, and here on the 20th we see telemetry dropping back down. Folks, the NOAA model bottom panel is plasma speed, even after two days inside the 600 kilometers per second stream. Two days of real data inside that faster stream, and as we come out of it this morning, their model still shows the beginning of it today the complete story of model failure. We're zooming in on 211 angstrom so we can see coronal holes and major low corona structure. Areas near the north and south poles that look open are indeed the semi-permanent polar coronal holes of the sun, part of its dipole. Let's come down now to Mount Sinabung in Indonesia. Eruption yesterday sent ash 7 kilometers high and within the rising ash cloud, a beautiful stratification of thin concentric sheets appear in the column. That's a very hot and energetic event. For veteran observers, you know the name Kuroda. This is a detailed look at why the published correlation between the solar cycle and southern annular mode actually exists, one of the most solid in solar climate forcing. Then Captain Renaissance Jeffrey Love is on the team describing how a realistic 3D solar storm model can reveal reality where actual disruptions can vary in order of magnitude up or down from the 1D model runs. And speaking of solar storms, interesting look here at the return times of major events. They say Carrington events are on about a 110-year return, with the Halloween storms on about a 38-year cycle. That makes the Quebec blackout in 89 a weak Carrington scale return, but they also suggest that the confidence intervals indicate the broader range of possibility. The sun can go over X100, we should be getting X20s about once a solar cycle, and any given return period appears to have the potential to be greater than anything we've ever seen in the space age. Up next, a big story describing how sea level rise is accelerating in this 22-year model observation of the statistics. The issue is that once again we insist it is sea level variability, not sea level rise homogeneous. And while the words they speak disagree, none of their models or data do. The variability is going both ways, with equal variations at the most critical regions, the most extreme, and not those indicative of the type of sea level rise most of us get into our imagination based on the mainstream news. Lastly, folks, amazing paper hit archive last night on the magnetic fields of the Milky Way Central Parsec, first few light years from the galactic center. It turns out a number of structures can be revealed, but the most important is the material seen directly around the center and its field. Colors denote coherent structures in space, like stars, and the lines are showing the magnetic fields. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.